Is the housing crash upon us? Well, from Nick at ReVenture Capital, it is. He just posted a, an article out just now. Check it out. Wall Street cancels contracts on houses. 65% crash in just Vegas alone. And it doesn't stop there, folks. Remember 2008? Well, this the, what we're going through or going to go through here soon is going to be worse than that. We go down through here. The epic housing crash is upon us. Even Graham Stephan, the housing market is in serious trouble. And then you scroll down through here. You can see a Evictions are starting, and then we've had enough. Well, I hate to say it, but yeah, I've had enough too. So let's get over to the facts, folks. Let's go over to the facts. People continue to say the housing market is crashing, crashing beyond belief. It's down 100% in some areas. Well, let's really look at the data. I'm not here to educate you guys and give you false information. My job is here to dissect all this information that you're being spoon fed to really see, is there a reality behind it? Is there any facts? Or what truly are the facts? So to dig in this, the first thing I want to look at is foreclosures. Because why? Well, what happened or what caused the 2008 housing crash? Well, it's foreclosures. Look at where we were. Okay, so this is our starting point. Right now, we're seeing in 2023, 185,000 uh, units in foreclosure. Okay, how does that compare to even pre the 2010 housing crash. Well, we look back at times and we go back in 2008 when this all this all started to unravel. 2008, we had 1.3 million foreclosures taking effect. 2009, building up to the calamity, uh, 1.5 million. And then 2010, when we peaked out at 1.6 million homes got foreclosed on. So where we are right now, 185,000. So a tenth, a tenth of where we were. Okay, well, let's go and find out why did so many of these houses get foreclosed on? Well, it's pretty simple. Subprime mortgages. Let me explain it in its basic, in its basic forms. What happened during 2000 all the way leading up to 2010 was this. People were getting even what we call in the business liar loans. What are liar loans? Well, they were stated income loans that you didn't have to validate any of your income. If you had a decent credit score and you had a job, basically you can just fill in the blanks on how much you made. That's how simple it was to get a loan. So you could get 100% financing on a home at that time. Not only was that the, the case, you could get a teaser rate. What I mean by teaser rate? Well, let's say the going rate at that time was 7%. Well, you'd get a discounted rate down to maybe 4% at that time that would go from 4% to 5% to 6% to 7% ultimately. Okay. But also what was happening is you didn't have to pay your principal and interest on the loan. You only had to pay interest, which was called an interest only loan. So that made your housing payment even that much artificially low. So a lot of people got into houses and they're like, man, I can't believe I can afford this house to find out ultimately they couldn't and they ended up in foreclosure. So what I want to educate you guys on today is those subprime loans are gone. They were ended during that crash. Okay. So there are pockets of loans right now that are called non-QM that basically go off of stated income or maybe bank statement loans. However, those loans require in most cases 20% of a down payment. Okay, so that's basically what's happening on the foreclosure side. Now let's get over to see this housing crash that everybody keeps talking about. So here's an, here's an article that just came out today. Okay, here's where house prices are and where they went. If you break this down, let, let's look at it in detail because the, the caption of the article is this and it's intriguing. Core logic. Home equity increases from winter to spring. So aren't, weren't we told by everybody the housing market's going to crash? Well, let's really dissect the data. The map of the average year-over-year -year equity gains per borrower. Okay, so if you look out on the West Coast, you can see here Washington uh, and down through the states, California, all the way down to Arizona, they have negatives in front of theirs. We called it. We said that even on this channel, I said, those that saw 40, 50, 60% appreciation in the last two, three years, you're probably going to see the housing market correct some. And in these markets, you're seeing uh, in between a 5, 10, and 12% correction. Okay. So we know that. Is that a crash? No. I did a video the other day. Austin, Texas has seen 200, 200% 200 appreciation in the last 10 years. And so far, year over year, they're down 11%. They're the biggest crash in the markets. So let's get over this. We see, again, 
California down 48,000. We have Nevada down. We have Utah down. And then we start getting to, you, if you take that third of the country and move it to the side, now let's take this part, this two thirds of the market, let's see where we are. Because we can't just cherry pick data that we want. So we go through here and I'm in Illinois. Illinois, we're seeing a 8%, $8,000 uh, $8, increase in our equity in our homes. But what I want you to focus in on, is there any negatives? We have positive. Minnesota is down 3,000 on an average house of worth 300,000, so it's down 1%. We have all these states right through here. Look at it. There's very rarely are you seeing any negative values. And again, if you go even, even if we go all the way over to California, you have a $48,000 reduction in home values. Guys, the house prices out there are six, seven, eight hundred thousand for starter homes. Okay. But the biggest market that took correct so far is Texas. Texas has saw a 13,000 equity in homes being stripped away. Okay. So if you do this research and you check out my video from last week, uh, Texas, it's down 13,000. The average house in Texas is $450,000. So what percentage of that is the decline? Okay, it's not much. Okay, so what I'm trying to explain to you is, yes, there is houses in the market that have dropped in value, but if you actually go over this news in context, you can see right through here. Let's break it down. Only 2% of homeowners with a mortgage were in negative equity as of the second quarter. Okay, second quarter. 2% in negative equity. Why do you go into foreclosure? You don't have enough equity in your house to sell that property. So we only have 2% of people right now in the area that they don't have equity in their property. House prices have risen 6.3%. Um, fewer owners were underwater in Q2 compared with the previous quarter. U.S. Uh, homeowners with a mortgage saw year-over-year -year equity losses of 8,300 in the second quarter of 2023, but quarterly quarterly gained an additional 13,000 on the average home. And then the Northeastern, which I keep talking about, states posted the nation's largest annual equity growth in the second quarter. That's why I was explaining. If you look at the Northeast, they're killing it. If you're looking in the Midwest, in the middle of the country, not doing too bad. Here in Illinois, we see a 4.4 appreciation rate so far this year. If you're looking on the West Coast, that's where you're getting hit. Why are you getting hit? Well, it just can't be, it can't keep going at the pace that it's going. Again, Austin, Texas, a 200% increase over the last 10 years. So guys, my goal here on this channel, my name is Dan Frio. My goal is to educate and inform you guys with the facts and nothing but the facts. So when you start seeing videos like this and your neighbors are saying, well, you'd be an idiot to buy into this market, say, hmm, how is the local market that we're in right now? How does it compare to where we were? And are we facing, you know, foreclosures, rampant foreclosures in this area? And are we actually seeing the markets declining or are they actually inclining? And if, again, if you go back to Nick at ReVenture Capital, who's basically the spokesperson of all this, he's predicting Wall Street's canceling contracts on houses and Vegas is gonna crash over 65%. Unfortunately, he's been saying that for about three or four years. None of this is coming true, but he continues to add subscribers on a daily basis. God bless you, Nick. You're doing something uh, successful in business, but man, I wish you would provide a lot of the truth behind the numbers. So that's it for today, guys. I'm not here to bash Nick. My goal is here to educate and inform you guys of the facts when it comes to real estate. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, please do that right down below. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.